Welcome everybody to the August TDL Member Forum. I'm Christy Park and I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. I hope everybody's having a great week so far um, and a great end to the summer and start to the new semester. We'll start with our normal um, land acknowledgement, acknowledging the physical places from which we're all joining in, in this virtual space. All of us located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. Our staff at TDL work remotely um, and we're joining from all, of, all over Texas and, and outside of Texas as well. I'm joining from Austin in the central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. I invite all of you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to, and we'll paste a link where you can learn more about the indigenous people of your area. We're gonna follow our usual agenda and I'm joined by our deputy director, Courtney Muma today, as well as Sabrina Davis from our member library at Texas Tech University and providing some updates. And also big thanks to Megan Hernandez, our um, admin associate for handling the slides um, for the forum today. I'm gonna start with a few updates from our governing board about um, an initiative and a set of changes that has come from the last couple of meetings of our board starting with a new strategic planning initiative. So Diane Bruxfort, who is the Dean of Libraries at the University of North Texas and our outgoing governing board chair, is leading a strategic planning task force that will begin meeting in the next uh, few weeks to develop a new set of high level strategic directions to support TDL's mission and to help us achieve our vision for the organization. Our current strategic plan goes through 2023. So it's time for us to review and refresh um, our strategic directions as an organization. This task force is listed here on the slide. Um, in addition to Diane and Courtney and myself, the group consists of um, a, a really nice um, diverse set of perspectives from different institutions across the consortium, including Posey Agard from UT San Antonio Libraries, Kate Radowski from AM Corpus Christi, Bethany Scott from University of Houston, and Adrian Shapiro from Texas Women's University. Uh, we'll be working over the next couple of months to refine our organizational strategies that will guide our work over the next three to five year period. And the group has been charged with um, engaging the broader TDL community to gather feedback. So you can expect to hear from them this fall with some opportunities for contributing to this effort. We'll be updating our board on this initiative at our September 19th board meeting and we'll update you all um, as we go throughout the fall. So um, more on this to come. Next up, I wanna let you know about some changes to the way that we're structuring our membership categories and associated fees. Um, this will start September 1st, which is when our fiscal year begins. Earlier this year, our governing board approved updated membership tiers and base membership fees for regular members in the higher education tiers. We made these changes in order to address TDL sustainability needs and to more equitably share the cost of operating the consortium. These changes impact the base tiered membership fees for regular members in the higher education tiers. That's a lot of um, components to that sentence. We'll, we'll look at it more as we go. And before we, we look at the tiers on the next couple of slides, I'm gonna make a couple of caveats, the most important of which is this. We've been discussing these changes with our various boards, including all of your deans and directors for more than a year. We just haven't discussed it necessarily in this context before, and we wanna make sure everybody is aware of the changes. If these changes impact your institution for the upcoming fiscal year, we have already discussed it with your dean or director and any institutions immediately impacted are the ones that 
are up for renewal starting September 1st. So we're renewing contracts. Those contracts have already been processed. We've already been in contact with um, your institution about the changes and, and um, are, we're moving forward with those changes. It'll also impact any new members who join after September 1st, right? So these are the existing tiers and associated fees right now, the status quo. And you can see, you know, we have the founding ARL institutions, a category called high research non-ARL, which is a pretty, it's our biggest category of institutions, um, independent medical libraries, master's granting, baccalaureate granting, and community colleges. These tiers, with the exception of the ARL tier, are tied pretty closely to the Carnegie classifications for higher ed institutions. Uh, I wanna note a few things about this, this structure before we look at the changes. First, we've historically had four institutions in this ARL category. And those four institutions alone um, have been contributing 50% of our membership fees. That's a pretty significant load that that group is carrying. But also we have two new ARL institutions within the membership. UNT and Texas State have both joined ARL in the past few years. But um, there's a big disparity as you can see between the top two tiers in this chart. Um, and the jump from high research into ARL is pretty, pretty hefty, pretty prohibitive. Finally, that high research category covers an overly broad range of institutions from very high R1 research, high research R1s to R2 institutions to doctoral and professional universities. So these are some of the things that we're trying to address with the updated structure. Okay. Um, so let's look at, oops, sorry, the, some of the changes that we're making. This column or this table adds a column showing the new base membership fee structure. And it also adds a row for a new tier. I'm going to give you just a second to take it in. And then I'll point out a couple of things. So first off, um, probably the first thing you notice is that the ARL fee comes down pretty significantly, but also two new members will be joining that cat that tier um, in the coming year, Texas State and, and the University of North Texas. Second, um, you'll notice we've we've split that high research ARL, non-ARL category into two categories, R1 institutions and then R2 and doctoral and professional universities. And with that, we've, we're narrowing the gap between the R1 and ARL tiers. So the R1 category goes up, the ARL category comes down a little bit. And then finally, we're, making more modest fee increases for the other tiers. So um, our hope is that this new structure, um, it helps us address some, you know, needs that have come about because of inflation and increased costs, but also we hope more equitably shares the, the burden of um, investing in and supporting the, the consortium. I just want to reiterate, this is the new structure starting September 1, but it doesn't mean every existing member institution starts paying these rates September 1. Many institutions have current contracts um, that run through the next year or two. We're honoring those contracts through their termination date. And um, for those institutions that are renewing starting September 1 of this year, we've made accommodations to stair step larger increases. Um, so everybody in, who's in that category of about a dozen institutions, we've already settled that process with leadership at your institutions. Additionally, we aren't lowering fees for the existing ARL institutions immediately either. Those new fees will also be phased in over time. 
So this is um, kind of the new structure starting September 1, but we won't fully get there. Everybody won't be fully in the new structure um, for a few years. It'll take us some time to phase it in. If you, if you want more detail about these changes and how we're implementing them, there is a blog post up on the website. We'll post a link to that in chat and you can take a look. Uh, I'm of course happy to answer any questions here or after today's meeting as you have them. But um, for now, we'll we'll move on, and I'll just note that we are we have a couple of upcoming board meetings um, where we'll be discussing these initiatives and providing updates. Our governing board meets on September 19th next month in College Station following the Texas Council of Academic Libraries Conference. And then we have our um, annual member board meeting coming up in October. We're still working on finalizing the date and time for that. That will be a virtual meeting. And that's where all of the, the deans and directors of all of our regular members meet to discuss the business of the consortium. That is usually an open meeting, or at least part of it is an open meeting. And so we'll post information about how to attend that meeting on the website when it when we have it. All right. Um, before One more thing before we move into our service updates. I want to let everybody know that we are close to wrapping up our search for an outreach and member engagement coordinator, yay, um, who will play an integral role in coordinating and supporting our community of member groups, producing content for our website and promotional channels, and coordinating events like the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. We've been really fortunate to have a wonderful pool of candidates um, to consider, and we've conducted finalist interviews in the past week. So my hope is that we'll be able to make an announcement. I don't have an announcement today, but I hope we'll be able to make an announcement about a new staff member in the next oh, couple of weeks, two to three weeks. So stay tuned for that. We're really excited um, to move forward. All right, so um, we'll move into our service and projects updates now, and I'll start before I hand it over to Courtney with, um, some updates about repository hosting and journals. Um, the big the big thing we're working on here is DSpace 7 upgrades, as you all are aware. Those are well underway, going pretty smoothly overall. Um, Nick Woodward, our DSpace tech lead, is leading that process and doing a, a really, really great job. Six of our hosted repositories are now moved into version seven. So TDL's own repository, as well as member repositories at Angelo State, West Texas A&M, UT Southwestern, and Texas State. Sorry, that's five of our hosted repositories, not six. Um, and we're going to be upgrading Baylor next week. So I was probably already counting Baylor. Um, we're planning out the order of the remaining upgrades, and we'll share more about that order at next week's DSpace user group meeting. So if you're a DSpace user and you want to know more about kind of where your institution is going to fall in the order of upgrades, um, be sure to make a note to attend. Um, as a reminder, we have documentation developed um, by the DSpace 7 task force that's available in our wiki. And we're adding some additional documentation about the upgrade process as we go. So we'll paste some links to those user docs and the upgrade FAQs in chat. And as I mentioned, our next DSpace user group meeting is scheduled for next week on August 22nd. Moving on to open access journals, um, I want to let you know that that we have, um, in collaboration with our OJS user group, developed some more complete written policy documentation for this service. Um, and that that policy was adopted by the OJS user group last month, so it's official. And you can find it on our wiki. Uh, we'll post a link to that in chat. It includes information about what the service entails and the various responsibilities of TDL staff versus member librarians versus um, journal editorial staff. 
And it includes a template for developing an institution level MOU for use with faculty at your institution. So we hope it will be helpful to you um, if you're using OJS at your library uh, and welcome any feedback if you have it. The OJS user group meet did not meet this month, uh, but we will reconvene in September. Our next meeting is September 7th at 10 Central. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Courtney. Hey, everybody. I'm glad you're here with us. Um, I'm Courtney Muma, Deputy Director of TDL. I'm going to start with digital preservation updates. Um, and first thing I want to share is a blog post. Uh, Ima Odwak shared a blog post recently about a born digital preservation workshop she attended in June in Houston at the Manil Collection, hosted by Maintenance Culture. Maintenance Culture is a national endowment for the humanities funded program created by Myriad, which is a nonprofit consulting organization that seeks to help smaller cultural heritage heritage institutions preserve their collections. The focus of maintenance culture is on building a community of practice around the preservation of creative, complex born digital objects. In Houston's two-day workshop, attendees looked at specific case studies for born digital creative objects and collaborated on ideas about how to display, store, and preserve them. You can read all about it and learn about other maintenance culture events in the links provided in chat. Next up, the call for nominations for the NDSA Coordinating Committee are now open. I've personally served a three-year term, and Bethany Scott from University of Houston is currently serving as vice chair. You can read about the process and requirements of the position in Bethany's blog post linked in chat. And just as a reminder, if you're a member of the Texas Digital Library, you are a member of the NDSA because TDL is an NDSA member. You can also have your own personal membership if your institution chooses to do so. And finally, Digital Power is hosting a free digital preservation training institute in Tucson in January of 2024. Um, not only is it free, but there are also stipends available for your travel. So check it out for more information. We'll provide the link in chat as well. Um, moving on to Text Hub and our DPLA harvesting service, the July DPLA um, harvest for Text Hub is up. So check out the blog post about the harvest linked in chat. Um, we're also extremely pleased that Texas Women's University has added two collections to the TDL harvest. Um, the picture that you're seeing right now is from that harvest. Um, they gave us permission to share that. Um, and to see those collections and others from Text Hub, go ahead and visit our DPLA local site at texas.dp.la. Now on to Vireo and our ETD management service. Um, Frank Smutniak has just returned from some time off, um, but migrations and upgrades have resumed already. We have had very positive reviews of the latest version of Vireo 4, um, specifically from um, uh, UT Southwest Medical, <laughs> and are excited to get it to all of our Vireo hosted members as soon as we can. And for our research data management and the Texas Data Repository update, I wanted to let you all know that TDL has completed its biannual upgrade of the Dataverse software for the Texas Data Repository. So the TDR is now in version 5.13. This upgrade enables TDR users to access two new features, user-enabled notifications that allow users to select the messages that they wish to receive from the system. So maybe reducing or increasing those emails that they're getting from the system, depending on their preferences. And we've also added something called DV Web Loader, which is a small web application that can be configured with Dataverse to allow upload of a whole directory or a folder tree of files into a Dataverse data set, um, retaining their paths within the directory folder in the data set. TDL, as some of you may know, is also biannually preserving all new published data sets in Chronopolis, um, a distributed digital preservation system that's part of our digital preservation service. And that process was also completed in tandem with the recent upgrade. All right, next up, Sabrina Davis, Open Educational Resources Librarian at Texas Tech Libraries, will get us started with some community updates and exciting news about a new user group. 
Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Courtney. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Sabrina Davis. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Open Educational Resources Librarian at Texas Tech University. And I am so excited to also be serving as the chair of the new OER Users Group uh, alongside Kate McNally Carter from the University of Houston. The TDL OER Users Group will encourage the widespread use of open educational resources across Texas, in Texas institutions by creating opportunities for open education advocates and practitioners to come together to exchange information and create resources for TDL members and the broader OER community. Membership in the group will consist of any staff or faculty members from TDL member institutions, and the group will meet monthly starting on September 13th from 2 to 3 p.m. In the spirit of openness, the group will also host quarterly OER at TDL forums and other workshops or events that will be open to the wider community regardless of TDL membership. If you're working at a TDL member institution and are interested in participating in the exciting work that this group will get to do, uh, please consider subscribing to the OER users group email list. And then for more information about TDL OER support services, you can also visit the OER support webpage on the TDL website. I look forward to seeing all of you, or some of you, at our first meeting on September 13th. Thank you, Sabrina. I am so excited about um, getting this group off the ground. Um, it's going to be a really great meeting, and I encourage everyone who's interested in OER to attend. Um, big, big thank you to Sabrina and Kate, uh, Kate McNally Carter for a lot of work over the summer laying the groundwork for for getting that group going. So um, excited about that. I also want to let you know about a great another great opportunity uh, coming your way a little later in the fall. Um, the Research Integrity Interest Group that we host at TDL will be meeting on Thursday, October 12th. And that meeting will feature a special guest presentation by Jason Ramage, who is the Director of Research Integrity and Compliance at the University of South Florida. He's gonna be talking about all things related to research compliance, including the mission of the Research Compliant Office to serve, protect, and educate. And he is going to share some ideas for ways that researchers and anybody who supports them, including librarians, grant writers, and compliance staff, can collaborate to promote research integrity. So if you've ever wondered, what does the Research Compliant Office on my campus do? This is a great opportunity to learn more and interact with somebody who leads that kind of work. So we hope you'll join us. And We'll put a link in chat to the event on the TDL website. We're not requiring registration for this meeting, so you just need to grab that Zoom, li Zoom link and add it to your calendars for October 12th at 2 p.m. Central. Next up, I'm going to hand it back to Courtney for a few additional updates. Awesome. So registration is open for the annual Vireo um, user group virtual meeting. Um, we did change the date, so hopefully I sent out enough message to get that across. We're on October 9th. Um, we really hope you can join us for some information sharing from Vireo developers and the Texas Digital Library about performance and accessibility improvements to Vireo 4. We'll also add some um, discussion of new community strategies to encourage more participation and opportunities to talk about Vireo features and changes together as a group. So we we'll hope we hope you'll join us. Um, TDL, uh, some of you might know, has been a longtime partner with the U.S. Electronic Thesis and Dissertation Association, including sponsoring frequently sponsoring their annual meeting. That virtual annual meeting is also coming up next month on September 20th and 21st, and this year's focus is access and accessibility. It's sure to be a great meeting, and you can find more information and registration from the link that Christy's dropping in the chat for us. And this next one is near and dear to my heart. Um, San Antonio Regional Archivist, or SARA, is hosting San Antonio's first ever Archives Bazaar. As many of you may know, I live in San Antonio, so I'm involved in the planning for this, and I'll definitely be there. So this is happening on Saturday, October 7th, 
um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Brick in the Blue Star Arts Complex. Really cool spot. Um, an Archives Bazaar, for those of you who are uh, new to them, is an opportunity for area archival repositories and community archives to showcase collections and also their collecting focus. This event is free and open to the public and attendees will be able to learn about area archives, explore tables with samples from collections, listen to presentations from researchers and community members, um, participate in a preservation lab and enjoy regional musical entertainment. Um, there will be food and drinks available as well and a really fabulous West Side Sound DJ and featured talks from local researchers and other archives professionals. So this program is made possible in part from a grant from the Humanities Texas, the state affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities, a, gr a grant as well from the Society of Southwest um, Regional Archivist and institutional sponsors, including us at Texas Digital Library. So I hope y'all can come. If you're not in San Antonio already, if you're somewhere close, I'd love to see you there in person on the day. Um, and finally, just wanted to highlight some upcoming member meetings. Um, we have our uh, relatively new DPLA user group I want to highlight is meeting again. We meet quarterly and we're meeting again this month on the 23rd. Um, and some of the other groups that we mentioned during this presentation and some of those presentations as well that we talked about. Um, so hopefully you can join us for a few of these meetings. They're all free and they're all open to anyone. You're welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleague, colleagues in your network to join us as well. That's it for me. I'm going to hand it back to Christy to finish us up. Great. Thank you, Courtney. And thank you again, Sabrina, for joining today. Um, we managed to just like finish right with one minute left, but we will um, stick around for a little bit here if you have any questions. And I also um, want to remind you that we have the TDL suggestion box if you would like to ask a question anonymously or make um, or provide feedback. You can do that through the Google form link too on the slide and which we'll put in chat. Um, but with that, I'll open it up to questions. If you have some, if you would like to um, raise your hand and uh, and ask it verbally, happy to happy to call on you, or you can put it in chat. I'm not seeing any hands raised. I'm not seeing any typing in chat for the moment. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up. But it, you know where to find us. If you have any questions, definitely get in touch. Um, it's good to good to spend a half hour with you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. And we will see you again same time next month, if not sooner. Y'all take care. Bye, everybody.